Segment's being sponsored by the Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency. Join us in preserving and protecting Tennessee's wildlife. All right, guys, tonight's call-in segment is being sponsored by our friends over at Taylor's Archery. They're at 100 East Lauderdale Street in Tullahoma, Tennessee. Or y'all can give owner Tracy Taylor a call, 931-563-7706, and let them take care of all your archery needs. I know season's wrapped up, but guys, that means tournament season is firing up now, and it's time to get ready, get down there, and let Taylor's take care of all your needs. All right, if you guys want to give us a call tonight, you can do that now. We're at 615-737-7767. And if y'all want to give us a call, any questions or comments you may have, we'll definitely take those and try to get them answered. Um, while, we're, while we're waiting on that, Wes, you know, I mentioned something while ago. That right where we just were on this hunt, I tell people, that the, the biggest, I've told you the story of it, but the biggest deer I've ever shot in my life was on the very last day of the deer season. Very last day of the season, and it's always kept me, I was 16 years old then, and um, but it has always kept me to where, till that last day, it ain't over. That's you know, right. I've always kept that attitude. Well, a couple weeks ago, or now, you know, last day of the season, is January the 2nd, I got a last minute opportunity to go hunting with my daughter. We weren't supposed to be able to go. I had another engagement actually for the show. Got canceled for weather. We decided we we're gonna go hunting. We we're on the very last day. And that buck that was in the front of that video a while ago, sending in that Milo that gave me fits for an hour. My daughter chased him all season. She got him on the very last day yeah. of the season. So, uh, big excitement for yeah, us, man. You got man. some really good footage it from, was some from great that footage. one, too. Can't wait to share that. Um, the excitement of, of just getting to do that with her. Uh, but, man, she just... She was dead set, Wes. I mean, it was, it was, there was two different she bucks was calling on that the video shots just that now day, that she, she let go. <laughs> you know, she let them go, and then, yeah, that day, you know, it was, what do you want to do? You know, I want to go here. That's where I want to sit. She had a certain stand she, she wanted to go wanted to. to do. And, uh, so that was pretty cool. Now, all y'all that follow us on Facebook uh, probably already heard a little bit about the story and, yeah. and saw some pictures from it, but that's one that's coming up in the next few weeks. I'm really looking forward to sharing. Um, of course, as deer season winds out, we'll still be wrapping up with some deer season. Now we're getting out, getting some fishing footage. So that's, right. that's taking off. Everybody that's that's been asking about that, we've already been out doing a little crappie fishing, uh, some sauger fishing. So we're gonna have some of that coming down the pike. But obviously, you know, as the editing works out, it'll still be a little while. We'll be covering some deer hunts, and yeah. man, we had such a blessed season. Yeah, that you know, was a was great. A, that was some great footage you had on that last film, man. I mean, that, <laughs> you was in a zoo there a couple of just, days. I mean, it was it was. Like November the, I told you earlier, November the 8th, right about in there, it kind of switched over. Um, but November the 10th to the 13th right there, I mean, I don't, it was just insane. It's you know, and, and they were running and chasing and fighting. And Well, I noticed you let a pretty wide three-year-old walk. I did. Right before that bug, did. didn't you? That deer, he was pretty nice he, he was in bow range. Yeah. And he came out, and it, it's one of those deals when you see him on there and you see how wide he is and everything, you might think, you know, Brandon's crazy, you know, but <laughs> he was just, he's a great deer, but he's a young deer. And yeah. I knew that, that that big seven and Curly, the eight pointer that, that was in a mile, I knew those two bucks were in there. Right. And I had seen them both and they were chasing uh, and I decided and Jack decided who, who manages these places with me, but you know, we're gonna let that wide deer go yeah. and, and let him grow. And we actually lucked up even more so, he ended up breaking his main beam off. Uh, pretty soon after that video was made and he never got shot, he, he lived you know, through the season. Yep. Uh, but my point is that might have helped us. You know, he broke yep. that main beam off, so if anybody Didn't saw nobody him, no yeah, more, it might did. not have been as tempting, <laughs> yep. you know, to him anymore at that point. But uh, that, that was just those few days right there that were that were in order on the video tonight were probably the four best deer movement days I have ever experienced. And, you know, I just happened to, to be in that zone and they kept moving just out of range. You know, it was muzzleloader season, and uh, I, you know, I've got a CVA Acura, great gun. You know, you can shoot it out to 300 yards, but I practice with it out to 200. Right. And and I really want them to be 150 or closer. That's just how I am with it. And they kept going by at 
220 <laughs> yards, 240 yards. And that blind was out there that we bow hunt out of so much. And finally, after that third day, and I told you on the phone, I was like, I'm either going to spook them or I'm going to get them because I'm going to that blind. Yeah, it was morning. time to go for it. Yeah, I yeah. was like, they keep walking right past that blind, and that's where I'm going to go. And so. 4 30 that morning we snuck in there and and it got just in been, there early it and, worked out you know yeah. don't always um but that particular time it worked out and it was it was just a a great feeling to get and then of course um, when you get you know you got that buck you've been watching all year you had yeah. pictures of him you had several encounters yeah. and several right there in dates in a row you yeah. know so yeah, it's pretty it, satisfying. It finally when that all happens. came to you know, and that, and that was what it was all about. Now after that happened, I kind of eased up. That was it. It's time for Emory to hunt. Then you yeah. know, I had my deer and and I was good. And I, it was neat having the apex competition going on too. I'll add right. that that it, it just added that much more excitement to it. And he did end up fifteenth place, and yeah. it, and it was the biggest seven point taken. So I right. was proud of that. Uh, but there were some great deer turned in on that apex there competition, was. guys. It, that's something that it took off really well this year, don't get me wrong. But in years to come, it's going to get bigger and bigger. It'll be twice as many next year. I mean, I think everybody you know, got a little taste of the competition did. this year. It was year. great. It was great. Well, we have a couple. Let's go ahead and take a caller here. Mike, how are you doing tonight? Hey, pretty good. How are you guys? Doing, doing great. Good. We appreciate you calling. Yeah, I just want to ask you young guys a uh, question. Sure. Uh, back back in the days when a good friend of mine, neighbor of mine, we used to go out and fish, you know, middle Tennessee lakes. It's about 30 years ago, 35 years ago. And we catch a pretty good amount of, you know, crappie, bass, and, you know, during the spring and the fall. But are you seeing the pressure? Because now when I go out to fish, just can't catch as many. And are you seeing in your day... Uh, pressure on these lakes that there's just not the number amount of bass and crappie you can go out and fish. And back in those days, we used to start fishing at night to catch more yeah. uh, fish. Mm -hmm. and, and even in the rain, which I couldn't understand, but it works. Are, so you don't. Guys seeing, <laughs> are you guys seeing that in today's environment, less and less amount of uh, fishing? I think in a way you mentioned pressure and I will say one thing I have never in my lifetime seen the lakes as pressured as they are right now uh, you have of course you've got when you get into summer you get into pleasure boating and things like that and then it just really gets insane but to be honest with you even now fishing pressure on the lakes is as high as I have ever seen. Yeah. I, there's more bass tournaments than I've ever seen before. There are more people crappie fishing now than they were before when they came out with this. I, I'm going to go ahead and, and cut you off and keep talking because we're getting feedback, but thank you for calling. Uh, but we will keep talking with your call here. Um, but there, there is, there's more pressure, and I think that that is, is one big thing. Uh, you've got people that can now go in and target fish a lot stronger than they used to be able to with these new electronics and things that we have now. Yeah, we were not talking about this them, earlier. Yeah, I'm not yeah. knocking them at all, but, you know, a guy that used to be able to go out and catch, you know, 10, 12 crappie a day, can now go out and limb it out every day. You right. know, once he figures out where they are, I mean, it's not a guarantee, but it's about as close to a guarantee as right. you will ever get in fishing. Yeah. And so, again, not knocking them, but do I think it's made a difference in pressure? Yes, absolutely. I think the year 2020, especially when no one was working, most everyone was out fishing, mm -hmm. it was great for license sales, boat sales, you name it. it There's a lot of goods to it. Right. But the bad side was, it, it didn't matter if you were there Saturday morning or if you were there or Wednesday morning or Tuesday night, the boat rafts are full. Yeah, so and even I, nighttime I do think now, there's a difference you know. There. Yeah, even at nighttime. You mentioned nighttime. I do a lot of that too. Uh, the night crappie bites one of my very favorite things to get after, especially in the summer. Um, but hey, at night you're going to have more boats going by you now than you've ever seen. So the yeah. fish are still there. TWRA is doing a great job keeping them stocked, and there are plenty of fish there. But pressure changes them just like it does deer or anything else. And sometimes they'll they'll right. change their their patterns, mm -hmm. and you kind of have to stay after them. But we appreciate you calling. Mike. Right now we're going to go on over and do this week's tip of the week. This week's tip of the week being brought to you by none other than our buddy <laughs> Wes Stone at Cryolite Real, Real Estate Services. You can find him at 1432 West Main Street in Lebanon, Tennessee, or give Wes a call at the office there, 615-444-8200. Let him take care of all your real estate needs. 
And tonight he's going to take care of you with a tip of the week. So yeah. what do you got tonight? I think I'm going to go back into the deer hunting again. All right. Uh, you know, now season's over. We're wrapping it up. But between now and green up, by the mm -hmm. time everything starts getting green and foliage comes out, this is my favorite time to move my stands, make all my adjustments from what I learned from the year before. Yeah. And uh, all that, I'm going to have all that done before Do it's it right green. right now. Yeah. And then also leave your cameras out. Um, I'm big on leaving my cameras out really all year. But you know, you're going to be able to see what bucks made it. You might see these bucks start to return back to their summer range. Yeah. Uh, you know, in you January, know even February. Right. And uh, those bucks that might have left during the summer, uh, just leave Get your cameras out. There. But be ready to have those stands and all yeah. that move before. It's cooler. It's, and yeah, you can don't see. pressure the deer. Yeah. But one thing I'll throw real quick with the cameras is I firmly believe this that those cameras last longer. If you keep them in the woods all the time, oh, I do too. if you bring them in and out of the house, they, yeah. they'll they don't like just be turned on and off. They don't like to be turned on and off and put yeah. in and out of the weather. But guys, we appreciate you checking out that tip of the week. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back here in just a minute with some more Southern Woods and Waters. <laughs> 